In today's video, we are going to address some of the questions that I get regarding how to critique an article. So there is no week that goes by that I don't get either one or two emails asking for some form of clarification. So I have decided to compile some of these questions and answer them in this video. And uh, one other thing I decided is subsequently, I'm going to make another video. It is going to be really detailed. It is going to be long where we are going to critique an article together. I'm going to teach you how to do the write up as well to an extent. So anticipate that video. If you're interested in that video, you can let me know in the comment section. But either way, I will go ahead with it because I get a lot of questions. But today we're going to address all those questions. So if that sounds like what you're looking for, then definitely keep watching welcome back so if you're new here welcome make sure you subscribe and join this amazing academic family my name is Buki and I'm going to be your academic guide today all right so let's dive right into the questions I have compiled them and just um like put them together some are actually quite related but I decided to make them just about six or seven they're about so Let's get right to answering these questions. The first question is, what tool should I use to critique? Okay. So there is a previous video that I have that, well, actually two previous videos and in both, because I am a sucker for CASP tools. We use CASP tool in, in the two videos, but there are so many other tools. We have like uh, Joanna Briggs, we have Amstar, we have, okay, CASPs, like I mentioned, and we have uh, Prisma. We have so many. So what I would do is I will list some of these tools and the link to how to access them in the description box so that you will be able to check out which one suits you the most. I love CASP because there is CASP for everything. There is CASP for qualitative, quantitative, cross-sectional. There's CASP for a lot of things. So, but, but then that doesn't mean you can't use the other tools. And especially if you have an assignment that tells you to use a particular tool. So just go ahead and use it. And this tool in question that we're talking about, what does it mean? It means the tool guides you regarding how you should uh, critique the article. It gives you the outline. Either some tools tells you to answer or to critique the article based on sections like introduction, methodology, that's how you critique it. But some tools actually break it down further. More than that, they critique the title, critique the aim, the objective, they, they critique the uh, abstract even before going to the introduction. So the tool just guides you, it's a guide. And it helps you assess like a checklist, like a checklist. It helps you assess whether this article is worth, especially if you're doing a literature review or if you're trying to do a systematic review to is worth including or is worth removing or what what's not. You get what I'm trying to say. So it's just a guide. That is what a tool is. It helps you assess the quality of that article. So the there is no one tool that you can use for all it depends on you i hope i hope i'm making sense but it actually depends on you so you have a lot of tools out there so it's left for you to now decide which one you want to go with or which one is best fit for the article you want to critique question number two how should i title the subsections so that's what i just mentioned as well in this question number one it's it's not it's it depends on the tool you're using one and if you're actually writing proper proper academic writing like an essay that you want to submit i would not advise you to uh put in subsection i'd rather you write it in the proper essay format using paragraphs and proper essay strategy and submit it that way, not in tiny subsections, so that it looks like a story that can be followed. Academic writing is like story writing, to be honest. It just has to follow a pattern. You're critiquing. So tell them the true tool you're using from the beginning so they would know whoever is reading it, whoever the person is that is reading it would know, okay, this person is using this tool. That means this should be the way it should be written. Do you understand? So there is no 
one way fit or even for this one so you don't have to put it in subsection but you have to use the proper paragraphs and uh you have to follow the tool that you're using to critique question number three says do i reference my supporting evidence <laughs> okay so let's let's get it right of course you reference your supporting evidence i don't understand academic writing does not as it you can't do academic writing by writing based on your opinion nah that's not possible so you always have to reference your supporting evidence you already know that when you're critiquing you use uh critique what has been written back it up with an evidence and reference make sure you paraphrase then make sure you cite that ref um, whatever article you're referencing whatever your supporting evidence is make sure you reference it there that way you're not plagiarizing because if you use an article and you don't reference it then you're plagiarizing it's not until you copy and paste that you're plagiarizing okay so no this is not negotiable you have to reference your supporting evidence okay now the next question says do i categorically say if an article is good or bad who are you i'm sorry what who are you well okay no jokes aside now um seriously i think you have to tread with caution when it comes to saying something like that you don't just categorically say someone's article is good or bad i have read in so many places that you can't have a bad research even the research that you think is bad is still a research so you can't have a bad research a bad research there's nothing you can't say an article is bad an article is good i don't think that's the right way to go about it instead i'd rather say um you have reasons to believe that the results from that particular article should be um utilized with caution or should be implemented with caution and you say the reason why you can't just say the article is bad and neither can you just say the article is good what does that even mean there is no perfect article either so you can't just say an article is bad or an article is good instead if you have doubts about the result then you say um you have to exercise a bit of caution in implementing the results gotten not just that an article is bad ah uh, ah uh, do you know how much effort how much and how much energy how much of resources went into that article so because it doesn't align with you doesn't mean does not mean that it is bad you don't just say that that's not i don't even think that's a nice thing to say ethically i don't think that, like humanly that's 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 not nice ethically it is wrong so there are nicer ways you know this academic writing thing is just is there's a bit of diplomacy in academia generally you have to be diplomatic so you can't just say it is bad just say it the right way like exercise a bit of caution because of this 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 okay so that's better than just saying outrightly that this article is bad then the next question I have a limited word count how do i go about writing my uh work what section is more important okay so this is a bit tricky and i would rather say i would rather direct you back to your tutor but if i am to answer a question that has to do with critiquing an article and i have a limited word count what I would do is to go for the jugular. And what do I mean by this? I will go for that section that I think is what critiquing the most. It, it won't be a particular, like, I can't say which section until I have an article like that. But one thing about articles is that there is always that section that stands out that, you know, oh, I really have to critique this part. And remember, critiquing doesn't mean bad. It doesn't mean good. It doesn't mean bad. It just means you have to critique okay so if you've been following this page for a long while you know by now that when we say critic we're not saying right in the negative and so far i hope you have liked and subscribed by the way anyway so let's go on critiquing doesn't mean bad so 
when you have a limited word count go for where the chunk of the meat is i hope you understand what i mean by that where you know is worth critiquing the most it might be where the most excellent work was done or where you think something better could have been done or there, there's an alternative to uh the option that they used and then you think you should go ahead and critique so that is what i mean by that chunk of meat so that's what i will do if i have a limited word count but at the same time it's better for you to ask your supervisor your tutor whoever is overseeing the assignment that okay there's a limited word count what exactly am i expected to write and i'm sure they'll get back to you and tell you what is expected of you okay so that way you play safe but well, that's what i will do but that doesn't mean you should do that. You should ask for direction from your tutor. But if you're given to go ahead to just write it any way you feel, I think my method is really good. All right. So my final question, the very last of the questions, and that is, can I use my own words as in my thoughts or views? <laughs> ah, I'm shaking my head already. This is academic writing your thoughts i'm sorry they don't count your thoughts your views do not count only researched and evidence-based uh materials and ev evidence-based statements are allowed your thoughts and views what you think or what you view doesn't really count except the only time I think it does is if there is, if you feel like there is an underlying, like an underlying uh, procedure or something that was carried out and wasn't mentioned, but you don't now go there and say, I think, no, you can either go this way and say, um, the fact that this particular issue wasn't written implies that you get that's different from i think it is there are two different things the fact that something wasn't done implies that is different from my opinion it is different from i think that they're not the same thing so no you cannot use your thoughts or your views or your whatever your school of thoughts nothing about you right now it's what has been reset except you have written an article and then yes you can now cite yourself and paraphrase and then yes i said this i mean that's that sounds really cool right so but jokes apart you can't use your own words or your own thoughts it has to be something established okay so i think that pretty much covers all the faqs that i have for this how to critique an article if there is any question that you have that i haven't answered you can leave it in the comment section and i would get back to you in the video that i promised you know i promised the video where we would critique another article fully this time like from beginning to the end so i have to be like really prepared for this one like it, it has to be longer than 15 minutes i really don't like my videos being too long but i will do that one just to cover it all i think i think that would really help a lot of people or what do you guys think let me know in the comment section what you think all right so it's been nice talking to the camera well thank you for listening thank you for listening so far and i hope you've benefited and you've gained a thing or two from this make sure you like make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out anytime i upload anything on academic writing and i forgot to mention to you guys be on the lookout i have something amazing coming something amazing i don't want to let that let the cats out of the bag just yet okay so i have something amazing coming planned for you guys and you guys are going to absolutely love it all right so i'm done talking thank you for listening until I see you again in my next video or till you see me again in my next video, <laughs> make sure you put a smile on somebody's face. Bye.